Good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending to where you are. I'm calling in from Malaysia and some of our participants are from Latin America, so we're covering really a uh, big part of the globe. My name is Pier Andrea Tirani uh, from Euphoric Services and together with my colleague Pete, we're going to facilitate this peer exchange meeting. Um, we're a small consultancy company and we work with the D Group Foundation to support them with the communication, support for the board and membership related issues. I'm very happy to, to be able to facilitate with the, the, this uh, second peer exchange meeting we organized organizing with the Bigroups Foundation after the one uh, we all held last November. Uh, the materials for that meeting are online, so if you're interested and want to access it, um, I'll be happy to share them with you. Uh, today we've got two very interesting presentations from um, SDC and FAO. We'll, uh, we'll hear from them uh, in a minute. But before, before we start, uh, um, let me just give the floor to uh, the, D the chairman of the Bigroups Foundation. Neil Pakman Walsh to give us a couple of introductory words. Neil, over to you. Thank you also to the speakers in advance for today and to all participants. <clears throat> Welcome to those of you who are D Group's partners, and I, uh, there, I suspect there are a few guests as well, so people who are not yet with D-Groups but are interested in D-Groups, welcome. Uh, D-Groups is a non-profit foundation founded in 2009 and we are 18 international development partners including the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation and the FAO, both of whom we'll be hearing from today. And as uh, Pierre said, uh, this is our second peer exchange meeting and we, the, the idea of these meetings is that we will learn from each other about different ways of using D-groups and how we can be more effective um, individually and indeed collectively. Because uh, D-groups, there are several hundred D-groups uh, on the platform um, that are all being used in, uh, in different ways. And we do aim now to make this a regular event every three months months will hold D groups peer exchange meetings so if you would like to present it at a future meeting just let us know and uh, we'll bring you in for our next meeting which will be in July so that, that's all from me but by the way I'm speaking from just outside Oxford where my base is in the UK and um, I run uh, well I'm involved in five D groups one of which is the, the biggest one is HIFA 2015, Health Information for All by 2015, which uh, has over 6,000 members. And I've been using D-Groups for many years and feel very privileged to be a member of the board and working with uh, other board members um, to support this. So looking forward to today, and I'll pass you back to Pierre. Thank you very much, Neil. Thanks a lot. I see that some people are still coming in. We had, uh, uh, like you saw, four, about 40 people registered, which is very good. Let's see, uh, let's see if they come in when uh, during during the presentations. Um, just very quickly before I pass over to uh, my colleagues from SAO and SDC. Um, a couple of uh, ground rules and uh, um, a couple of uh, introductory information to make sure that uh, we can use the platform, this AT&T platform, as efficiently as possible. Um, we'll, we have, uh, as it's about 90 minutes for the whole event, so we'll have uh, the 15 minutes for the two presentations, 15 minutes each, and then we go into what I, I hope is going to be um, a rich and, and fruitful discussion. Um, couple of, uh, a couple of ground rules, uh, uh, like I mentioned before. Uh, let's use uh, the mute button where we are not speaking. So I'm, you see I'm pointing here at the mute button. Please make sure you have selected this. Uh, you click to mute when you're not speaking, so we minimize background noise and echo. I see some of you have still have still the microphone open. I would kindly ask you to mute the mic, please. Um, 
During the presentation, uh, we will uh, not have, uh, um, we, we, we will not interrupt our speakers. Uh, but uh, if we have any problems, we can use the emoticons. I you see I'm pointing to the emoticons here, uh, and you see you've got different uh, uh, different ones that that we can use. Uh, raise the hand. Uh, uh, it's probably the most important when we go in the in the Q and A bit. Um, we have also the option to send notes. And uh, I would encourage you to use the chat to record your questions as the presentation unfolds. Uh, Pete, uh, my colleague Pete is going to monitor the chat uh, and, uh, so that we can already collect some questions uh, for, for the Q&A uh, as the presentation unfolds. You see it uh, from here, you can access the send note uh, option from the toolbar on top or just next to the list of participants on the right side of the program. Um, like I said, last time it worked very well to, to record questions or comments during the presentation. So I think that's, um, that would be a good practice to use also for, for this meeting. If you have problems in hearing and understanding, please again use the emoticon or uh, send a private chat uh, to Peter or myself, and we'll try to, to help as much as we can. Um, last thing, in terms of uh, um, presentation notes, uh, we are going to record uh, this meeting so that then we can use it for later play playback. Like I said, uh, the meeting in, uh, we, had, uh, we had a meeting in November, and all the material are now um, available as presentation, but also as uh, short videos. So we'll, uh, we, we want to repeat the same for this time. This is how we're going to do it today. So like I mentioned, two presentations, FAO and NSTC, uh, a function to send in your questions. And we have hope to have uh, at least uh, uh, 50 minutes, 50 minutes, 504 for Q&A at the end. If there is no question at the moment or, or you don't have any problem in listening and understanding, I don't see any raised hand or any emoticon come in, so I suppose everybody is uh, hearing all right uh, and is seeing the presentation all right. Um, so I would then pass uh, the presenting rights uh, over to um, Christine from uh, from SAO, and so that we can get started with the first present presentation. Christine, the floor is yours. Uh, between you and Julien, 15 minutes starting from now. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, everyone. This is Christine Colsus. I'm the FAO D Groups Administrator, and I'm also a board member along with Neil. And um, you may know that FAO is one of the UN specialized agencies working on food security, loves nutrition, fighting hunger. There's a lot of work to do, and knowledge networks and communities are very much part of this work. We have about well, 9,700 people in the 95 or so FAO D groups. And um, there's a lot of interest in it. We don't advertise. We don't have much resources to run this, but it's quite popular. And um, we're going to talk specifically about one of our groups, which is the Food for Cities group. We were used a lot for internal groups, external groups, meeting preparations, meeting follow-up. There's a multitude of ways we use the D groups, and we find them very useful. Just before we go, I hand over to Julien. I wanted to mention that we also spend a lot of work not just on opening a D group, but on the actual process of launching a knowledge network or a community. We ask new groups in general, the ones who are new to D groups, to then take a step back, think about what are they trying to achieve, what kind of audience do they have, what kind of modularity do they need to use with their people? Is it one to many, many to many? Is it private? Is it public? What kind of technological issues do they have? Are they going to need moderation training? So we really try and talk to people to see first what will work for them. 
And as we say here, sometimes dgroups is the answer, sometimes it's not. We try and find a tool that works for people so they can focus on the conversation and the technical exchange and not worry about the technology. And for that, we found dgroups very useful. I also just want to, before I hand over again, just to say that don't underestimate the time and resources it takes to run a network or a community. There's a lot of visible work. There's also a lot of invisible work behind the scenes to make sure that people feel included and welcomed, and it's, it's a space where people can exchange and discuss. So on that note, I'm handing over to Julienne, who will be giving you, let's see, click on the right button here, make him presenter. Do you have presenting rights? He will be talking about food for cities, which we think is a very nice example of what can be done. Over to you, Julian. OK, thanks, Kristen. So I will speak about and, uh, the Z group, Food for Cities Z group and my experience around this uh, Z group. So the Food for Cities Z group is a network and discussion is associated with the Food for Cities multidisciplinary initiative in SEO. And this initiative has been set up in 2000. The Z group itself started in 2009. So it's, a second time, the second up of the initiative within SAO, building the community of people within SAO, and the launch of the discussion. And in fact, the D groups was an outcome of a workshop that took place in SAO 2009, uh, in which and one of the outcome was last year, and I wrote it here, the participants decided to put in place an email discussion list to foster further collaborative work. And then we discussed with the different people in the including Christine, and this is when we decided that the groups could be a good, uh, a good place to, a good tool to develop it. So then the main objective of the, the the list we were setting, setting up was to bring together people working on different aspects of urbanization, challenges for food and nutrition security, agriculture, and management of natural resources. So it's quite a wide approach of the of different issues, and in fact, it covers about all the different activities of a sale. And we were looking to bring participants from the public sector, both from national and local government municipalities and international organizations, so FAO, but also other UN agencies as WSP, the World Food Program, UN Habitat, UNEP, and many others, as well as academics and GIC and the private sector. And I would say from the experience that it's the most difficult actors to get in the private sector because they have their own policies within their institution companies and it makes it very difficult to, to see. So one of the issues is to get new members. So how to do it with the with the D groups? Either by invitation or by addition. And this is one of the questions we have to answer at the very beginning. So first of all we have an active cooperation of members to to get members. So when we meet people we invite them to come on the D groups and about at every meeting I go to, I invite people to join the group. So it's an active, very active activity. Uh, yeah, activity. So, and I realize that sending invitation is really not efficient because when you send an invitation with the group, people often don't follow up. They forget or they put the message uh, somewhere and they forgot to to fill it in afterwards. So what we do most often is to, after the informal discussion we have had with the people interested, I add their name on the list, and then I inform, I send them an email to inform them that they have been added on the list, and I mention that they can unsubscribe at any time. So it's a bit intrusive, but not too much, because they have the option to get out. And I think it's one of the efficient way to, to develop the network. Then one of the problems with the D groups is that we cannot easily monitor who are the people who have left the list. So we know who is coming in, we don't know who is going out. So this is one of the negative points of for managing the, the community. 
Then, so we, we have set up since uh, three years, like the, the networks were set up in 2009. So in, in three years, we started with about 100 people, and now we have 1,900 people on the list. From, and you see on the map, many, more than 100 countries, mainly in Italy, because there is FAO is in Italy, so we have people from FAO, but also from Italian people outside FAO, but the, the proximity brings uh, interested people. And then we have people worldwide in all the countries, so a lot in the US, in uh, different countries across Europe, and in Africa, South America, and Asia. We have a lot of people in Kenya and in Thailand because we organize two workshops there, enable us to make many contacts and to attract people. We have a good, so good overview of where the people are from, but we are missing about 700 people who are today unlocated because they have not filled in the form to indicate their country. So we have, we are missing some information there. So, it's, uh, so D group is a mailing list, and it's just a mailing list. So it's uh, at, and sometimes when we talk about it at the edge of the social media, people are surprised that we are still using a simple tool like this. But as it's simple, it makes it very robust and useful, and anyone can have access to it without any password or any logging requirement. So this is one of the powerful features of the D group, and. One other thing very, I think, very positive is that it's a neutral platform. So it's not, there is no, no private company behind it. Then the interface for the administrator has been improved recently, and it's very positive for me. Uh, but for the users, in fact, it's quite neutral because about no one go to the, to the back office. Just one comment, sometimes it's a bit slow. When you send a message or you approve a message, it takes a couple of hours to get on uh, online. Sometimes it's just a couple of minutes, sometimes it's a couple of hours. So sometimes this is a bit annoying. And for today, uh, currently, on the Food for Cities, we have one, two, and up to ten messages a day. Then the facilitation of the discussion is obviously one of the big tasks we have. Uh, some, so what I do uh, as a facilitator, I send some messages from time to time on general matters just to give some general ideas or to launch a discussion. I do quite a lot of back office work, so proposing people to send information when they sometimes I receive, I said direct information, so I propose the people who send me the information to share it with all the network and sometimes there's a couple of exchanges before they agree to send it. And I encourage to have short messages, maximum alpha page with only one idea, if that's taken of the S, so just one idea per message, and with a specific added value for the food for city thematic. So no general messages, but focusing on one message and adapting the message to the interest of the list. And uh, and I know I can count on a core group of people within and outside SEO. I would say about 20 people I can rely on more effectively. Then it's an open knowledge platform, so it's just to the core of the issue, the, the core business of the list is to provide a common ground on food system approaches and food Food for Cities, the list does not replace but tries to connect other networks and initiatives. So it's really a, a network on which other people can build their own expertise and their own network. And the Food for Cities just belongs to the one who participates. FAO facilitates the network but don't, does not really and does not own the network. The network belongs to everyone. And while we make it open, and uh, like an open source uh, network, there is obviously and pro uh, probably, but uh, some spies, some people just coming to get some information and develop their own communities activities. But this is the the rule of the of the game, and we have to accept it if we want to keep on an open information. So. 
So it's a discussion list and, and just a discussion list. And, and yes, so there is no, it's, it's just a discussion. So there is no summary of the discussion. We don't try to make a, when, when there's a thread of exchanges, we don't sum up and make a compilation of the discussion because it would take too much time and we don't have enough resources. And we don't use the archives of the D groups. And one of the maybe lack of, uh, of D group is that there is no connection with the collaborative uh, tools. So the, it, it's a flow of information. This is maybe too bad, but it also gives a lot of freedom of discussion because some people can make a mistake, some people can say some stuff that are not backed by their organization, but whatever, because the next day the information will be lost. So it enables a lot of freedom in the discussion. So issues to consider, one list is all, no, but so it's, it's, just, it's a global list to cover all the issues, so it's a lot of thematic. We try to set up subgroups, but it's difficult to do it. So we are starting one on South America, but it's a lot of effort to get it started. To moderate or not to moderate? At the beginning, we were not moderating the list, so any message sent was going public immediately. Now, because we received too many spams, we started to moderate. It's not as good, I think, because it's, it's the freedom of speech is less, but at least we avoid the spams and we avoid the message to all, the reply to all. Then full time, I will full time job or just a new way of working. Christine mentioned that it was a full time job. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's true, but in a way, if you think you integrate really the list in your in your business in the way you have to work, then you can consider that it's just a, it's part of your activity and it's not just some work on top of your normal business, but it's really integrated in your business, and it's not really more work, but it's a new way of working. And on the languages, we use only English, sometimes French, and I will consider that it's no translation. Translation is too, too difficult and, and time consuming. So I just take one, a uh, couple of more second minutes, one more minute. So the achievements, it's an effective global network. So we have built a community. We are doing information sharing about meetings, preparation of visits, uh, connecting to other discussion needs like the FSM forum, food security network, uh, food security and nutrition forum, which is a global discussion on food security and we connect it with our food for cities list. But not so much discussion on projects because there is a fundraising issue behind it and people don't want to share information on fund, fundraising. Then we develop a, a food for cities uh, paper using the list to get input and uh, contribution and comments. And so we are developing a local food system approach thanks to the list. And um, yeah, we'll skip it. And so from the list, we are now a community of people. So it's not just a tool now, it's really a, a community. And let's comment, it's, it's, it's long to set up a list. And I would say it's nine months, maybe it's eight or ten. But to get the list started, to get people active on the list, it takes nine months. So when people want to start a D group, just to launch a, a, a specific discussion, I think it's useless. You really need, it takes time to, to build trust and confidence. And then people are really able to contribute. But it's, I would say, nine months to get anything started on the network. And the question is how to get, to go more collaborative. And how to link the D groups with a website or with a, I don't know, any Facebook or a Yammer or Twitter, or anything like this. And is it useful, and how to do it? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Julien. If you can in pass over presentation rights to Carmen, yes. just right-click on her name and, uh, and select give presenter rights. Uh, thanks very much. I think you touched on very important points on how to get membership, uh, what are the problems in monitoring the membership, uh, the issue between the, 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 the differences between the 
using it for an information flow, but maybe also uh, to use it for as a base for more collaborative type of work. Um, so that's these are, I think all very interesting points. Let's uh, let's hope to discuss more in the Q and A um, later on. And your question is specifically on this as well. Let me now pass the floor over to our two colleagues from SDC, Carmen and Carsten. I think Carmen, you're starting, right? Right. Hello, everyone. I hope uh, you can hear me well. So, uh, yes, my name is Carmen Eckert. I am the coordinator of all the D groups we have uh, at SDC. And uh, I will uh, do the presentation together with Carsten. Maybe you also want to say a few words about you. Hello, my name is Carsten. I'm sitting, sitting beside Carmen, and we have to unmute and mute our microphone. I hope you can understand me well. My, I'm working for Agridea. We are a resource center on agriculture and rural development in Switzerland, and currently advising SPC on questions about knowledge management. So um, you, you see already, we as SEC, as a government organization, we have a close collaboration with uh, external partners, but this will be uh, mentioned later more in detail. So how is D Group used at SDC? We have uh, thematic networks. They are institutional networks here at SDC, and they use D Group as a communication channel. Also, those networks, but also other groups, use the, the mailing list for the preparation of face-to-face -face events mainly for the logistics, but also to discuss content that will be treated later in the, in the event, so to pair also the content. Um, there are also thematic discussions that have nothing to do with a concrete event, but just um, a discussion to, to prepare a paper or to have an exchange about common practices. Also, we have uh, we use the groups for the communication between different networks. That means um, that, for example, two networks can, can have one common e-discussion or have an exchange on, on practices. And we have also all the network facilitators. That means all the persons that moderate discussions and um, and the network has they have a, their own D group and they can have a peer exchange on facilitator um, um, We use D groups also to communicate institutional information. That means um, if, for example, the IT department or another important department for, of SEC has something to tell to, to networks, then they do it through um, through the group. And um, yes, that was mentioned before already, the discussion between two networks. So what are the trends and highlights uh, in using uh, the groups in the organization? One highlight um, is that the groups is really an established tool so what was mentioned before, that it's um, really integrated uh, in, in the working process. Um, this is really a highlight for us. And also the, the satisfaction of the users is quite high, especially since the, the redesign. When uh, the old platform was in use, we had uh, some, some difficulties and um, some rather negative feedbacks, but since next e group is active, the satisfaction is really very good. Um, then what is also a highlight and maybe a trend uh, we see, in general the messages become shorter and more spontaneous. It's not this, um, yes, sort of, of uh, papers and very elaborated messages, but also work in progress. And um, also a trend is 
Well, we have this structured e-discussion as a main use case. It means uh, there is an input, then there is a certain series of discussion takes place, and at the end there is a summary of the discussion, so very, very structured. And um, now we are looking also for some complementary instruments, so to, to have a wider variety of uh, collaboration instruments, not only this structured e-discussions. And we are looking for um, for new methods, and maybe some of you can uh, give us some ideas also today. So what I would like to do now is to hand over to Carsten. He will present you the example of uh, his e-group that he is administering and tell you about uh, how he uh, is administering the group. Okay. I want to give you the example. Sorry, Sorry, Sorry yeah. Pierre here. Before, before you start, uh, I would have to ask again participants to mute uh, their mic because there is a bit of um, echo and background noise. So if you can just click on the mute button, um, that would be fantastic. Thanks, to, thanks, Carsten, over to you. Okay, thank you very much. I want to give you one example of a um, quite well-functioning um, D-group at FTC. As you might know, um, the FTC is consisting of um, thematic networks where the um, um, thematic uh, subject matter issues are not spelled only at headquarters. Um, such networks really are decentralized. The um, focal point and the core group might fit at head office, but the main parts of the networks really are decentralized in the field offices. <coughs> and uh, with the following slide, with the very nice statistics tool, there you can see as well the geographical distribution of members. Um, for sure, there is um, quite um, a lot of members sitting in Switzerland with all the many partner organizations. But there you can see the small dots, a lot of members of this network really sitting in the country offices, uh, like the hotspots of besides UK, where the um, think tanks and the consultancies are sitting. We have um, really a lot of decentralized structures in the network. With the next slide, you can see more or less how such a thematic network is um, composed. You have a focus point, and uh, this focus point is um, um, supported by a core group. This core group can sit as well at head of office or as well decentralized. And then you have the inner circle of the network participants. They are maybe SDC, System Development Corporation collaborators, or implementing partner um, collaborators. And then you have the outer networks with uh, local, regional, and international structures with organization, projects, and other networks. And for sure, this network has some partner networks, and this is more or less the architecture of what we at SDC meant by a thematic network. What is the purpose of the SDC Employment Income Network? It's, as already mentioned, it's an information channel. Um, a thematic exchange and discussion, and um, quite often, and uh, the most purpose is in, organ uh, in organizing campaigns. We at the private um, um, development uh, network or um, e group, we are organizing three or four times per year, three um, weeks or four weeks campaigns where we aim to discuss one. And as I said, the membership in the D group is much more than just the network, as I presented before. We are counting now more than 300 um, members, and maybe 60 or 70, that means only one third, are FTC collaborators. The others are practitioners, academia, consultants, think tanks, and really people from other networks joining in because they see there's a good term on information below. 
the goal of um, such discussion is really learning. We want to improve our activity by listening to others, by asking and answering questions and very important sharing of um, good practice. And maybe you um, listen carefully to Carmen. She mentioned that next D group now is a satisfactory um, issue within SDC that was quite different before. And we think that Next B groups has improved a lot, calling next B groups improved a lot, and it's really more than just a mailing list. It's so nice with the membership profile. Um, unfortunately, they are not very well filled in. Um, this um, requires really a campaign within the network that members really fill in their profiles. But um, it's so nice to see after the relaunch that those profiles are really um, um, written in more carefully by the members. Um, what we think is very useful is for the archive of those discussions that you really can um, move them, that you can handle them much better. Um, the email list or the mail the uh, mailing list function is really added on by the archive of the relevant documents um, sent by by discussion posts or also by the administrator in order to make a good and, and useful um, archive. Yes, and you are right, there's a problem with the search engine, but I hope um, that the D Group Foundation will remain creative as they have been in the last two weeks. What's unique about our ENTI Informal Income Network D Group, it's really a mixture of internal persons with external persons. As I said, only one third of the members are within SDC. This is only possible because we are using a mailing list server outside the um, Swiss federal administration um, architecture of, of um, IT, otherwise it would be not as it is now. Um, compared to other SDCD groups with 300 persons, more or less, we have a, a quite big number. When I listen carefully to Julian, with his uh, more than 1,000 uh, members, then we are rather small but the most important thing is that the compliance by its members we really can count on very active members and um, members really want to join the um, D group after they, for instance, moved to another um, job um, because they really see that they have a return as well. What's as well quite ideal is the trust of the network focus point. The focus point is really um, letting the facilitators facilitate the discussion um, in order to that he is, can contribute as well to the discussion. This is, I think, from my perspective, unique that the uh, focal point, the so called owner of the discussion group, is really outsourcing this to the. And for sure, we are a very good team of online facilitators. Um, as I mentioned, this is outsourced to the next one Monday. How is our group managed? There's D group slang saying non moderated means um, um, it is by heart quite facilitated. It's not standard. We are really counting on the pure uh, emails by our members. We can do this because our um, um, results are quite good. Hopefully, we will not have to change this to moderate in order to more censor the uh, contribution of the members. Um, we are quite um, unsatisfied with um, translated things because we think that uh, um, it's better to open a new discussion group 
in a specific language than doing a um, um, translation of all the contributions by the members. And to answer the last question, that the discussion of working correlation with other online offline services, yes. Each of the Semantic Network of SDC, they have a website called Shadow Sites. And for our discussion, since this paper, we are normally um, publishing after one of these discussions. We are not just um, uploading on the website of the ESI Network. We are sharing this as well with other networks, uh, networks and outside of SDC, for instance, with regards to the income to the and for P hub making up the for the poor approach is a uh, very useful um, platform for master's development. May I hand back to you? Yes, Carsten, thank you. So I would um, like to end our presentation with um, some reflections and then uh, uh, yes take away message and some questions to you also so um, when 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 we reflected where are the challenges we are we are having with, with D group our our um, main points were regarding more organizational uh, topics of course, there is the, um, the same with the search that doesn't work <laughs> really well, and also the statistics is not uh, is not quite uh, um, optimal, and also the overview of the um, of the blocked messages, for example, to have a, to have a box where you can see which were rejected, which none. So, so all these uh, functionalities that could be improved on the platform itself. They are also there for us. It's uh, an issue, but we have also other challenges. Um, one is the, the use of the profile. So we have those nice profiles, as uh, Carsten also said, for other groups also that would like to use those profiles more intensively. But uh, how to um, to make the members fill in fill out their profile? or should the effort be taken to do it as an administrator, it is a lot of work to do, but it would be really good to have those profiles more uh, completed. Then uh, at SEC we have um, a rather strict IT environment. Uh, in the in the main core in the main quarter but also in our cooperation offices. So it's always a challenge uh, to assure that D groups is really functioning uh, well and that the messages are arriving and they are not blocked because the system thinks they are spam. Um, and then, yes, in the future there are some changes planned in our IT environment. That means we will have a, a new collaboration platform, and this collaboration platform will have also mailing list functionalities. So uh, it, is, it is a bit the question how uh, should we continue to use eGrow because it also has its, uh, its um, advantages. And this is uh, still an open question at, at SDC. I don't know if others of you maybe have similar uh, situations. Um, then also, since D-Groups is an external tool, this goes together with the high security levels we have. It's always a bit of bargaining um, to, to build trust in our IT department and uh, yes, to, to accept it really as a, an established instrument. Yes, the changes I was uh, mentioning before and jumping a little bit, we want to Yes, still the new e-collaboration platform, and the trend is to have uh, one platform that um, includes different um, collaboration functionalities, um, mailing list, but also discussion forum, and other things. So to centralize it a little bit, it's similar to what what um, was mentioned in the presentation of FO before. People want to have all in one place, like in Yammer or in Facebook. And we have a bit the same here at SDC. 
Then the takeaway message for us, it's really important that the usability for the organizers is, is, um, is so good because it is, a, it is an incentive to use this platform if you can explain it very quickly and people can start to work right away with, without uh, a, big, um, a big explanation. And then the, the fact to have really dedicated resources for facilitation and that those resources are outsourced, they are not in SEC. It is uh, the group gains very, gains very much um, with that. It, is, uh, it, it opens up the horizons, it brings new ideas in, it is a very fruitful exchange and uh, it is important to have people that really have the time to facilitate. And then we have two questions for you. So what, uh, how do you use um, uh, D-groups and especially the, the profiles and the online, online platform um, and the archives, the, the library, the vista, do you have any experiences, how do you use it? And uh, yes, the, the website. So oh, that was it from our side. Thank you for listening. It was a bit longer than 15 minutes. Thank, thanks, Carmen. Well, <clears throat> it was my fault. I was a, a bad facilitator in this moment. Could you please uh, uh, pass presenting right over to me? Back, back to me. Just right click on my name. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, before we go into the question, thanks, thanks very much for, for your very good presentation. I think, I mean, there are quite several commonalities in terms of challenges, profile, search function, statistics, but I think uh, uh, very interesting is the fact that uh, both of you mentioned the fact uh, of the integration of D groups into the business processes. So to use it really as part of your uh, infrastructure and not as, as an add-on. Um, we had some questions coming in throughout uh, the chat. Can I ask, uh, uh, can I pass over to, to Pete for, uh, for managing the couple of questions um, from the chat? Uh, if, uh, and if you'd like to, when you would like to take the floor, please raise your hand uh, as I'm doing at the moment, so you see through the emoticon, so we can, uh, we can give you the floor. Pete, over to you. Thanks, Andrew. I've got a couple of questions in the chat. One from Felix, which is the reply to all problem. And I had a quick check with Hape Gehout, who is a long-standing user of dgroups, so I think still on the board. Hape, can you reply on, the, on Felix's question? I think we've lost the pay. At least I don't see him in the participant uh, list at the minute. Apologies. Um, I was chatting to Hape, who, um, as I say, has been using. What we were talking about in terms of Felix's question, the reply to all, uh, D Groups doesn't at the moment have a function to select as an administrator whether users reply just to the sender of the mail or to the whole group. And by default, the message does go to the whole group. Does anyone have any suggestions about how to help users understand that quickly? Please raise your hand if you would like to, to reply on this. Thanks, Carmen. So we've got... Uh, um, We've got Carmen and then Christine. Yes, we, I was uh, talking about that this morning uh, with a group member that was complaining exactly about that thing. And he had the idea to, um, to reposition the, the links that are now at the bottom of the message where it says reply to sender, for example, to put them at the top 
and make them a little bit more readable, maybe. And um, what I then answer to him is uh, that there is a possibility to moderate the group and uh, at least then the message is not directly sent to everyone, but the administrator can can uh, block it before. That was my idea, but I'm, I'm um, looking forward to hear others. Uh, let's see if um, Christine has, uh, has some other comments on this. Christine, please. With a very similar experience to Carmen, that people uh, sometimes write back to individuals when they meant to write back to, when they meant to write to, the whole, to individuals, they write to the entire group. So we, we just say in the footer, usually there is a link saying, remember, if you apply, it goes to everyone. If you want to write to Carmen directly, here is Carmen's email address. But uh, it, it does come up every so often, and it's a good question. It's not. It's a mailing list. So it's not really designed as a system to write for one-on-one -on -one correspondence. That is true. Thank you, Christine. Uh, I see also Felix with uh, his uh, hand raised. Felix, over to you, and then we go to Julien. Yes. Hi, everybody. Um, well, we have seen the T, uh, the, the D group that I am managing. Um, the, it is moderated, so we, we, we don't have the problem that the, the message goes directly out to everybody, but um, still I think it would, would be nice to have it more visible for the group members uh, that if they press the reply button, it really goes to everybody because people are used from email that when they receive a message from somebody and they, they press reply, it goes only to this, this person. So. Um, I guess at least uh, a clearer uh, marked message saying that uh, it goes to everybody would be a help or uh, probably the most comfortable thing would, would be to have like a selection where you can say uh, I um, I want uh, you can either reply to everybody or, or to, to only one person but that this may technically be a bit uh, difficult. Thank you, Felix. Sorry, I forgot to ask. Can you please introduce yourself? I mean, where are you calling and the organization you, you're working in, so that everybody knows? Yeah, sorry. Uh, I didn't mention that. My name is Felix Hintermann. I'm um, working at the School of Agriculture, Forest and Food Sciences in Solid Cotton, Switzerland. And we are mandated to um, manage the website of one of uh, this SPC networks. Actually, it's the Agricultural and Food Security Network. And um, I'm managing the website of this network and at the same time also uh, the D group. Thank you very much. Thanks, Felix. Um, I think uh, Julien also was uh, raising your hand. Julien, do you want to comment on this? Yes. No. In fact, the, the, this is the reply to all is one of the issue when managing the list. So at the beginning it was not moderated. Now it's moderated. So oh. now that it's moderated, we don't have the problem anymore because I can block the messages before they go to everyone. And before we had the problem sometimes, but people can learn. After one or two times it happened to them, they stop replying to all most of the time. So I think there's a learning curve, it takes time, but at one point it's, it's okay. And when the list is less than 500 people, I would say it's manageable. When it's more, then it's, it begins to be difficult because you have ev new members every day, so people take time, it takes time for the people to learn, and so it creates some, uh, some, some noise on the list, so it's, uh, it's a problem to manage. But one thing about, one good thing about the reply to all, you know, we add some very funny messages, almost private messages going on the list, and it enabled to create the community because people were sharing the information that was private with other people. And so people had a sense that they were creating a, that it was a kind of, of private list, uh, almost, uh, I would not say family, it would be too much, but some people sharing some specific messages, quite confidential about fundraising, project or trip they were going to have. 
and it 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 supported the creation of the community at the beginning. So it's not too bad to have this. So it's uh, yes. Uh, uh, from from what you can say, you, you're you're all saying there is a bit of uh, design issue in terms of the platform that maybe this should be made clear that, that when you apply, you apply all. And yes, I agree uh, with you. It's very much about uh, uh, coaching users to the optimal use of of the platform. Um, and then yes, when you when you see the need, you can always switch back to mod to have it moderated list. So just to filter out. Um, personal messages or, or thank you type of messages, which don't add very much to the conversation, probably. I don't see any any other hand raised uh, at the minute, so um, I will go back to Pete uh, for any other question that we have from the chat. Pete? Yeah, we had a question from Hans Merton, um, who asked, is one-to-one -one email contact within the community possible. Hans, can you explain a bit more about your question? Do you mean, can you directly email an individual within the community? Can you identify and send an email to one person? Is that your question? Hello? Um, yes, that's exactly my question, whether it's possible within the community to have direct one-to-one -one email contact because it should also act as a platform for networking. Thank you, Hans. Quickly, yeah, no, uh, where, where are you coming, where you're calling in from and your organization? I'm calling in from ACFO, from the Netherlands. And I'm working uh, for ACFO uh, with respect to the topic of knowledge, uh, knowledge management. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. So Neil is on a reply. The email of the sender shows at the bottom of the message. And on the website, if you are a member of the community, unless the settings have changed since I used it recently, uh, you can also go and see who else is a member of the community. Am I right, Pierre Andrea? Yes, you can see you can see the members of the community, but uh, I think uh, the quest. Uh, I'm not. I don't think you can uh, email directly through the platform at the minute to one community member. Uh, that's that's uh, that's my understanding. That uh, and yeah, Ape Ape is, is confirming that. So yes, I mean uh, you agree there should be also probably some more networking functionality in terms of one on one. Uh, member to allow this to happen within, from within the platform. Um, maybe that's not something needed for all the groups, but um, um, but that's something yeah, that for some so for some type of groups would be would be helpful and, and useful. So those are the only two questions that came out of the chat. Yeah, please, please, write it, write it. Yeah, that was it. Uh, so there are no more questions. Okay, I, everybody. I, I, I encourage you people to use the groups in my mailbox. Okay, I thought there were a couple of other questions or comments coming in before from uh, Neil, I think, uh, earlier in the chat. No, I, I, sorry, I didn't think those other questions. Neil just uh, suggested that we. Added a, a request to, to um, P groups um, suppliers that, that we get an email if somebody leaves the group, um, and then Neil made a comment about practice within HEFA 2015. There are no other questions, there, Andrea. 
Thank you, Pete. Well, I think uh, I mean it would be good to to also help our presenters with their questions, uh, their questions because they have some clear ones. Uh, um, I'm, I'm displaying them in the whiteboard now. Um, so as they they've given us the insight on their D groups, maybe it would be nice to uh, if uh, if we some of our participants can uh, uh, can reply to to this question or contribute their views on this. So you can see the, the questions here. Um, how, I mean, are there other dif are you using DigiBoost in a very much different way? And are you go how are you going about online profiles and archives, which are things that uh, Christine and, and Carson have said this year are not using? Um, and how can we use it more as a community website? And how about collaboration tool? Is this something which is coming out across different organization, or should this be DigiBoost just be a mailing list because that's what uh, uh, it, the job is doing well at the moment. Anybody would like to take uh, to comment on this? I see uh, somebody has written down that possible connection with LinkedIn. I don't see who has placed this comment. Can I can I ask who has placed this comment to um, to elaborate a bit more on this? Yes, for the comment about the connections with LinkedIn, it's Julien Cristo. And if it was regarding the online profile, because people don't have so much time or willingness to update profiles on different platforms. As a lot of people are creating a profile in LinkedIn, why not trying to connect the profiles with, of LinkedIn with the D-Groups? I think this is uh, this is very interesting. Would anyone would like to comment on this? I think it, this could be an interesting idea because yes, probably people would type, users would tend to keep more up to date their LinkedIn profile than a profile in any other network. Um, any comment or idea for an idea on this? I don't think this is possible, technically feasible now, but yes, that, that, um, that's definitely something that I uh, think could be, could be interesting. Yes, Neil is commenting via the chat. Is not uh, able to to join in. So you can see the chat. I would encourage if you have uh, if you have audio to. Um, it's, I think it's easier to just uh, raise your hand and ask uh, and ask the floor to to comment. I see one hand and um, raise. That's um, Carmen. Yes, Carmen, please. Go ahead. I just wanted to comment on Neil when he said yes, you go uh, googling when you when you want to find out about someone. That's true, of course. Um, but what what we want to achieve is we have this such a nice web interface, and it's just for administering the e group. Uh, it it wouldn't be necessary to have it uh, so nice. So it, we want to to bring those groups that have the possibility. To use this, this web platforms and the profiles are one are, are one uh, step in in this direction to have uh, yes the possibility to look for peers to search for uh, other persons from the same country that are in this group and so on. So more networking features within uh, the web interface so that users can also make more use of that. Um, I see there is one other hand raised from Felix. Felix, please, the floor is yours. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I think one problem is just that there are so many uh, services that that exist nowadays that you have uh, the D groups, you have the LinkedIn, you have Facebook, you may have an intranet, and you have other things, and uh, people just don't have time to 
to actually uh, to, uh, to to be everywhere and to keep up to date their their profile. So um, actually, as I see it at the moment, we with our um, D group, we just use it as a, ma as a mailing list, and there are very few people who really have uh, filled in their profile. And uh, it's probably just can't be expected that, that they do much more. And we have also the problem that we have uh, also a website of our um, of our network, and um, it is already difficult if you have like two platforms where people are directed to. You want to go on the website and look what is there, and then you want people to go on the D groups to to fill in their profiles. Uh, it can confuse them, so. I think it's really a problem that we would have to, to be able to integrate a lot of services in one place so that people don't get uh, confused and uh, they don't uh, they don't actual they don't uh, fill in their information. Thank you, Felix. So it's uh, uh, it's having the platform or different platforms to talk more to each other's, but Pete, you're just uh, testing some things, right? On your Gigroups profile. Sorry if you got to long move. Yeah, I'm just playing with it. I hadn't looked at it for, for a couple of months. And yes, you can add in your LinkedIn profile and oh. the profile of the D and your um, Facebook ID, and then when people look at your own profile on dgroups, they do link back directly to the profile on those sites. So it is a dynamic link. So that's definitely a step forward. Um, I love Hape's idea of signing in at Facebook with your dgroups account. That's great. That's it, Deandre. I was just pleased that, that the uh, the new interface does actually make the link dynamic. Thank you, Pete. Um, I think, uh, I mean, it, it would be interesting probably to elaborate more also on the, on the question from Kristin and Julianne, if you have, uh, if some of the participants have more, um, have some insights on how to, to go more collaboratively. So from the, the people in the room, are you using pretty much the groups the same way as uh, a tool to be connected and to share information within a specific uh, uh, network or community, or are you also trying to, to go more collaborative? So as starting from the groups to produce uh, some products together if you want, or, or to, to tackle business processes that require more collaboration than uh, um, communication. Is there any experience in the room worth, uh, worth sharing in this, in this regard? And is it something that uh, you as a community uh, facilitators are, are looking for uh, in a tool such as DigiLove? Please raise your hand if you would like to comment on this or to share your experience. Okay, it seems uh, we have a shy audience today. Um, I think, I mean, one, one thing which, like I said, it's very interesting, uh, you're tackling the, um, both presentation, both presenters are tackling the, the moderation uh, in different way, and uh, uh, while in SDC there are more, let's say, dedicated, uh, dedicated people to do the presentation in a, um, in FAO, it seems uh, there are not, uh, um, let's say, people with job description to do this facilitation or something similar to that. So, uh, how, I mean, how did the process of embedding into your uh, uh, workflow happen? I mean, what was the key? What were the key things uh, in this, um, in this, to, to make to make it possible to embed the tool into the into the business practices. Uh, that that would be a question for mainly Julien and, and uh, um, Karsten, but uh, anybody that is welcome to to comment on this.
So Julien, can you can you share a bit more how it went for you, for, for you to, cut, to 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 have the group search and add it on to something that uh, is part of your daily routine? Yeah. So on my side, I'm I'm in a specific position because I arrived in SEO in 2009, and just when I arrived, in fact, I contributed to set up the the D group. So I it was in the beginning integrated in my work and I have been building on my experience in the previous jobs I had in France in the Ministry of Urban Planning where I used also some discussion and uh, connected with websites. So I brought my experience from France and I tried to do it in a field and using the, the D group that seemed Right at the beginning, it was integrated in my work. And I try when I send a message, most of the time when I send a message to my boss or to other people in SEO, the first thing I think is, well, what if I have to send a message within SEO, why not send it to the D group and then it will reach the people in SEO. So by default, I'm trying to think on sending the message on the D group. To, and it's just reaching a wider audience. And a lot of reports I would have done before just to my boss or to a couple of people in SEO, now I send it to the, to the D group to reaching uh, all the, all the people. So it's really a new kind of way of, uh, of working. But then on the, on the management issue, it's also the recognition you can have within an organization and I think in SEO. The senior management is not really used to to such a discussion list and network, so it's not really valued. So for for someone who can come a young per, young professional coming to a, to such a list or contributing, it will not be rewarded. It's not in the like when you have some uh, results based management. It's not ranked in the in the evaluation process. So it can be frustrating for some professional. For me, I'm in a specific position, not because I'm not within, the, like I'm seconded by friends, I'm a bit on the side of the regular management, so I can have some freedom of management. But some, for the people who are writing the organization, sometimes I think it can be frustrating. Thank you very much, uh, Julian. Um, Carmen and Carter, um, how are things working for you in this uh, in this regard? Yeah, I'm <coughs> answering on behalf of, um, of Carmen at STC. There was no choice of using whatever kind of platform it was given due to the quite strict um, um, IT architecture within the um, federal administration system here in Switzerland to use this platform or anything. For that reason, um, the, our mission was always to make out the best of the use of speed groups. And, and I can remember, maybe I can tell you a story, that once we had a discussion, an e-discussion on D groups with maybe 150 uh, participants uh, that time. Hello, darling. And um, we Hi, got lost our SPC um, collaborators because the firewall at SPC was so strict that all the messages, it was like five, six per day, didn't reach SPC collaborators but the rest of the world, meaning that our remaining participants and only after a while we found out that the firewall was so hard in order to reach us by SPC participants, but in fact it was it was a winning situation because then and the IT department at, at the, uh, the Ministry of um, um, Foreign Affairs uh, realized the importance of e groups for that reason since then and thanks to, to Carmen, D groups is now on the white list of the federal administration. Yes, there are, I mean, there is always this issue of uh, working across the firewall, but I think uh, uh, 
uh, in that respect, DGROPS is one of the of the people of the tools that handles it better. So through setting up a DGROP, you can easily bring in people from within the organization or outside. And yes, we always need help from the technical support, the technical guys to uh, to have it whitelisted in the situation where DGROPS blacklists at server level. Um, Peter, something else from uh, from the chat. I see there are several. I mean, there are some parallel conversations going on. Um, I think we should bring in the voice conversation. Peter. Sorry, Peter Andrea, somebody rang me as I think you heard. Just as, I missed your question. I was saying I see that there is some parallel conversation going on through the chat. Uh, some people that don't have the mic enabled, uh, so I was wondering if there is something worth bringing in into the the live chat. Sorry, the live conversation. I hope everyone can see the chat because all the chat is going into um, <coughs> the, to all function. Um, and there was a conversation between Neil and Hape and, and Christian talking generally about the value of a mix and match approach for tools. You don't ex expect one tool to do everything. And the strength of dgroups is, is simplicity, simplicity and ease of use. So it's a basic, simple package that's straightforward and works very fast over email. Um, but we, there was a conversation about whether it should connect to other tools. We all agree. Uh, and I'm happy to add some information about uh, sending a message to the D groups. And if you want people to reply to you, own add the D groups address in the B BBC, I guess the BCC. Right. Yeah, happy. So I'll just explain that. If everyone can see the, the chat. Uh, Happy says, if you send a message to the D groups, it will reply to you. Add the D groups address in the BCC. So, in other words, you add your address in the two field and a D groups address in the BCC field, uh, and that way, <coughs> uh, the D groups address only knows your address. Um, and then Neil's asked a question. We're still looking for a venue for the annual D groups partners meeting. We have one suggestion for Rwanda. Uh, any other conferences uh, in October or November this year where we could meet? So does anyone know of any conferences around that time? Thanks, Pete. Yes, the, the Rwanda suggestion came came from uh, uh, CTA, which is one of the DigiGroup's partners. Uh, as you may know, they're organizing um, an event uh, later in the year, ICT for Prag, uh, and they were suggesting to all the partners meeting in uh, during the same um, event, but uh, we're not sure if Rwanda is a convenient destination for all the digital partners. Um, so as Neil put, yes, if you have uh, if your organization is holding uh, an event and uh, there could be a, a, a one-day digital uh, partners meeting attached to it, uh, that would be um, very good. Uh, very good to know and, and to, to scope possible. Um, venues and, and destinations. Any, event, any other events you are aware where you think it could be a D-group, uh, or it could be useful to have a D-group presence? Okay, I see we have um, some more, an, um, another question coming coming in from Sylvia. Question from Sylvia, yeah. Um, question to Julian. Yes. Okay. Would you, so can, would you uh, recommend uh, D-Groups for first-time D-Groups users? So, regarding the question, so we, ma we managed to, to do the 
two processes better. It took all together. It, I put nine months in order to give uh, and, and it was <laughs> a rough idea. But it, it would, uh, it, it has been six months really to, to do all the work. It started in, in March, April, <laughs> and the paper was released in October, more or less. And, uh, but, but it was very intense and very tough. So it, I think nine months it, it would have been a better timing. Just really from the very beginning of the paper to the, to the end. And what we did is that we, we gathered some contribution inputs and ideas in the first stage. Then we made the first draft of the paper. We shared the first draft with all the list and we asked for comments and inputs and we went back and forth like this in two or three, three times. Just to, to have, to improve the document. And then the, I think one of the things also with Bye -bye. the group because it's very, because it's very simple that when you send a message with a huge attachment, it gets it goes to the library of the groups. So this is a very useful feature because people most of the time keep on sending messages of six megabytes, ten megabytes on your mailbox with the D groups. All the messages are cleaned. But there's a problem, and, and this should be addressed more, I think, uh, it's, uh, because most of the people don't see that the links are at the bottom of the email, on the footnotes. And maybe this is where the links to the messages can be, could be put at the beginning of the message. Because most of the time there is this attachment of a dot .txt uh, text thing with a small message, but you understand only when you know. So for the newcomers on the list, they don't understand what, where the attachment went. It's a very good feature of the group. I think it can be improved on the design. Thank you very much, Julien. That's, uh, that's very interesting. Also, the previous uh, uh, peer exchange in November, uh, we had a similar story from one of the participants where different uh, focal points in Africa use D groups to um, basically write a, a concept uh, paper. And uh, that was possible because, yeah, the information was going through email, and we know D group is uh, very bandwidth friendly, and each of the focal points was then working offline uh, to input the, uh, the paper, which was then shared again through through the list as an attachment. Um, does anybody else want to comment on uh, on, on the questions you had before? If you would recommend D groups for first time users when you want to have uh, 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 to work through through a network. Any other different experiences, uh, good or bad, can also be bad experiences that didn't go well and then uh, you know there is always something to learn from um, from failures as well. Um, I see Christine. Over to you, Christine. And then I think we've got uh, one more question on the chat. So let's do. Let's have Christine. Let's have Carmen, and then we go back uh, chat. And then we. I think we have this as a last round. Christine. Thank you. A lot of it depends on what you're trying to do and who you're doing it with. We see that D groups work well with large public groups like Food for Cities. We also have a lot of small, invisible, closed ones, which are preparations for workshops or steering groups or such. So it really depends on what you're trying to do. I would say that it doesn't work, the groups doesn't work terribly well with collaborative writing. It's, uh, it's clunky for that. It's, it's fine if you're sending up a document or sharing a document, but if you want to actually amend it and send it back and forth, it's not the ideal platform. But, as Julien said, you can have a good discussion and harvest elements from the discussion for a paper. So it really depends on what, what you're trying to do. But I think it's a nice feature for dgroups that you can actually mix and match and then you can have a very private group. It can be internal and external and private. It can be internal and open. It's, it, it works very nicely for that. So we appreciate that here that you can 
tailor it very much based on the settings for what you want it to be. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's very important. Um, the last message you gave, you, sent, you, you gave us, tailor it for, for what you need, and, and then it defines also how you're going to use it. Um, there was also Carmen uh, in the queue with a hand raised. Carmen? Yes, I uh, can make it very short. I very much agree to what Kerstin said. Uh, this is also my experience. If you want to collaborate on one, on one document, then uh, the D group, especially if you use it only through emails, is not uh, a very good tool because you have then all these different versions and you're not sure what is the really newest version and what are we talking about really. Um, it's a bit better if um, groups would use the, the web library because there you can check out the document, you can work on it and then upload it again and then everyone can access the, the newest version. But since uh, very few groups use this web uh, site, I, I would also say for this kind of collaboration, not so ideal. The discussion of the documents, as also Kerstin, Kerstin said before, discussing about the document, uh, this works very well for us, especially if at the end there is a, a summary and, and everyone gets uh, maybe a, an actualized version of the document. Thank you, Christine. Uh, I hope you can still hear me all right. I got disconnected for for a few seconds. Um, Pete, I think there were there was a couple of other one other question at least from uh, from the chat, uh, and then uh, and then we wrap up. Neil. There's a question from Neil about future peer exchanges. Any volunteers? Any suggestions about format? Um, and have they suggested threat? Um, so have to make a point about the fact that SCC is apparently building a new system as is HEPOS um, and what that means for D-groups. Um, and having just made the point about the fact that actually with D-groups uh, we own the data. It's not evil in any sense at all. Um, I don't know whether uh, anyone, Happy, you want to comment on what HEBOS is developing and, and whether anyone from STC what, would want to comment on the systems developing there. Maybe after that we go back to Neil's question. Um, any other themes and issues people would like to explore at future fuel exchange meetings and any volunteers? So, uh, Happy or someone from STC, could you comment? Okay, so we're happy to suggest in the next period exchange we talk about threats and a bit more about the future. Um, does anyone, yeah, we can talk about that then. So what about the other uh, ideas for the next peer exchange in July? Is anyone volunteering to present their experience of using D-groups? No one got any issues they would like to hear suggestions about. Maybe first time users, maybe uh, maybe the opposite, maybe groups that have been going for a long time but they're getting a bit moribund. I don't know whether either of those would interest people. So we've got Neil suggesting he could present TIFA groups. Suggest Hape is talking about a connection through API. So in other words, we could have a general conversation about uh, desirable changes within D groups, um, and that would include the connections using APIs. Kristen, you've got your hand raised. Sorry, no. <laughs> okay. Um, it was a yawn, wasn't it? <laughs> Um, so we could, we could have, we've got a volunteer from Neil uh, on that, that very large and very successful long-standing group. Hape can just suggest that we talk about um, how we make connections uh, using APIs. I'm not sure, Hape, whether your group is developing APIs at the moment, is it? Do you know? It is. 
Very good. So maybe we could have a, a, a presentation. Would that be from someone from the, the management group, perhaps you have or perhaps someone from um, someone from uh, WA Search? And Neil suggesting a good idea to have presentations on how we use deep roots. Okay, so we've got a couple of things for next time. So we've got uh, how they can talk about some of the future issues, particularly the, the, the potential that's being opened up by an API application programming interface, in case people don't know that. It means that you can connect to other programs. For example, somebody could run a link between Facebook and um, uh, T-Groups. Uh, and Neil has volunteered to present on uh, HIFA 2015. And Neil suggesting, shall we do the next one in June? Uh, over to you, Pierre Andrea. You're organizing the uh, logistics. Thanks, Pete, and thanks also for this um, very useful suggestion. I think as we were planning for for a, a, another one in June, so we want we would like to put this as a uh, on a regular basis, one big exchange quarter. And uh, as we go as we go on, we can uh, revisit the format if uh, um, if you have suggestion now to improve. I think probably the next one is going to already be slightly different with one presentation, indeed, and more future discussion and things that. Uh, uh, could be would be nice to to be doing um, to be able to do. Um, I think we I would close the meeting here now. Uh, please join me in thanking and give a round of applause to our colleagues that presented. You see, I'm doing it by the chat. Sorry, by the uh, emoticon. Thanks very much for, for, to the presenters and the participants and see you hopefully next time in the next peer exchange. Thanks again.